you have said that we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Lord, I pray that you will speak to us the truth that we will hear and our lives will be liberated from the power of sin, from the power of the devil, from the evils of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will speak to our hearts. I pray that you will speak to our destinies. I pray even at this moment you will speak to our situations. Thank you, Lord. Be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord as we take our seats in his presence. Okay. Today, being a Palm Sunday, as it is the tradition of the church to celebrate everything that we understand by the plan and the purpose of the Lord God Almighty. Nothing regarding God, nothing concerning the scripture um, is in vain. That's why the Bible even says, heavens may pass away, the earth too may pass away, but not a tittle. The smallest Hebrew letter in the alphabets that the Hebrews have from what we will call the A to Z. Their smallest letter is like a dot. The Bible says that tittle, that dot, will not pass away without it being fulfilled. In other words, to you, it may be insignificant, but to God, it could be a point of fulfillment for you. Hallelujah. We have seen some people run a race, and it even happened in the last African Games, where they ran the 400 by 400 relay race. And when you look at it, from every angle, except from the one that I'm going to mention now, Ghana was to come first. In fact, when it was just few meters to the finishing line, all the Ghanaians in the stadium were already jubilating. And in fact, it was very funny. If you saw it on social media, Nigerians too were around them. And there were those coming out to make mockery of the Nigerians around them. Who Ghana has won. Ghana has taken the first position. They were jubilating. In fact, when it, the athletes crossed the line, the Ghanaians, including those of us who are looking at it from the camera point of view, what the camera was showing us, Nigeria was second. But by the time they brought out the results, to the amazement of everybody, the Nigerian put his head across. And the moment his head crossed the line, they made him the first. So when the result was shown, the Nigerians now began to tell the Ghanaians, Ghana, where are you? What is happening? And they mocked them back. Praise the name of the Lord. So it was that, that little tip of his head that crossed the line that made him to be a winner. And it gave victory to the entire team of forerunners. So that little Thing that is insignificant to you. God says it could be your point of fulfillment. I pray for you today. That little thing that will take you to the top, you will lose it in the name of Jesus. So, the lessons, the teachings, the plan of the Lord are enough for us to be victorious in life. So, when you look at the book of Matthew, chapter 21, that which is described as the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And today, for us as the body of Christ, it is described for us as the Palm Sunday. Because on such a day, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And people began to honor the Lord and indirectly honor the donkey by placing palm fronts on the floor and even their garments for the donkey to walk over. 
Shall we read Matthew chapter 21? And I will take it from verse number 6. Matthew 21 and from verse number 6. The disciples went indeed as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and they called and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. That's the first place where garments or cloaks or clothes or fabrics were placed to cushion the bones of Jesus because of the hard bone, backbone of the donkey. That is usually called the saddle. If you want to ride on a horse or on a donkey, something that will cushion your bones as you sit on the donkey. So the disciples made the ride on the donkey pleasurable, convenient, and good for the master. I want you to take note of that as I will put everything together. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, the second one. The first one was placed on the donkey to give the sitting of Jesus a cushion effect. The second set of cloaks were placed on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So let's look at a few things here that can help us as we celebrate the Palm Sunday in our Christian rites, Christian ordinances or Christian uh, um, celebrations in the body of Christ to show to the world that we have not lost our foundation. We have not lost our belief. We are uh, still a light in the world. Jesus gave his disciples an instruction. The Bible says they followed. You heard in the uh, short exhortation of our brother who led the exhortation as we normally arrange it for the fourth Sunday where we have five Sundays in the church or in the month to celebrate. And you heard the second person who led the prayer, how do we obey the Lord? There is no other way to be happy in Jesus, that song says, than to trust and what? But today we want to be happy. Today we want that joy. Today we want the blessing, but we do not want to follow the instruction of the principles connected to them. He gave the disciples an instruction. And they went to the place, he said to them. Prophetically, you will find a donkey there tied. Nobody has sat on it before. Uh, untie it. And if anybody asks you, tell them the master needs it. What do we give to the Lord? Is it the remnant that we give to the Lord in our lives, in our time, in our service, in our substance? You know what caused the trouble for Cain? He offered a sacrifice. It was true. Abel also offered a sacrifice. But Abel bought, brought to the Lord the fattest, the best, so to say, from his sacrifice. But Cain chose the best for himself and gave the remnant to God. Now the question is, who gave you the land to cultivate and plant your crops? Who gave you the animals? Who created the animals that you have taken for yourself to start what we will call a poultry or you start some kind of farming or some kind of, uh, uh, you, you start herds and you start to rear herds. Who created them? God. 
And if he could give us the best, the sun, the best, the moon, the best, the oceans, the water, he gave us the best, the garden that he planted to give us comfort. When it is time for us to give him something, we always think of the secondary, the remnant, the leftover, or that which we do not need. I remember a time in our former church when people would come to church with gifts. And I noticed a rap. I saw it. And you know, then they will, we will sanctify everything and they bring it to the office. We'll unwrap them, look at them and see which things are, can go to certain places. So, normally, normally, anything that comes like that into the house of the Lord, we will make use of them the way we can. The Spirit of the Lord just said to me concerning a particular gift. This thing had been with this person for a long time. And the person does not need it. And he feels this is what he can come and donate to the church. So I sent for the person. Said, I think you are the one who gave the church. They said, yes. Said, when did you buy it? Said, no. Said he didn't buy it. It was one of the gifts that she found in the store that was given to her during her wedding. Over two decades ago. It wasn't useful to her. It was like, what do I call it? Garbage. Or something that was occupying space or necessary in the house. So she got some wrapper or wraps and then thought it as a gift to the church. Do you know if she bought it a day before as a gift to the church, it would be acceptable. But for the fact that she looked at it and thought this is not something that I need. It's not something that should stay in my house anymore. After 20 years of leaving it in the storage, now felt that is what God would need. I said, take it. God does not need it. And she began to beg. Said, if the Holy Ghost leads us in a particular way, sometimes we think that the church is harsh. What killed Ananias and Sapphira? Was it because they gave gifts? No. But they gave the, gave the gifts deceitfully. The Bible says, Peter said they have lied to the Holy Ghost. He said the gifts were yours before you sold them. Did we force you? No. They announced it, let's meet the needs of the people. People were bringing what they had. Some sold their properties and brought the proceeds to the feet of the apostles. They brought big money. But they brought the money out of what? Deceit. They had said to themselves, let's sell our land. Then they said, let's take some of the money. Keep it for ourselves and the rest. No, you should have come to the Lord when you were taking that decision. What do I give? And when the Lord says give the land, do I give the land or sell it? The moment you have sold it and you've taken part of it, you have not given the land. Hallelujah. I asked the man of God that my spiritual father blessed and something happened afterwards. That day, he said, my spiritual father told him, God wants to give you the money that you will use to do a lot of things in the kingdom of God. Go and bring 40,000 naira. Go and look for it and bring it. I want to pray for you. So, he went, told his driver 
to meet some of his people or his friends to collect the money. On the way, the driver took some of the money. And as he brought it, my spiritual father said, is the money complete? The driver said, yes. He asked him, they didn't even count it. He just said to him, is the money complete? He said, yes. So the man, I, because I asked him myself, is it true? Did that happen? He said, yes. As he wanted to check it, the man of God said, don't worry. He has said it is complete. Go now. There is a church on so 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 street. They need the money. And the Lord wants you to go and give it to them. At that time, he got into the church. They were praying. The pastor was lifting up prayer. Lord, send help. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we want you to help us. So this pastor that I'm talking about went through the backside, talked to them and said he needed to see the pastor. The Lord has sent him with this gift. The exact money that they needed, he handed it over to them. And when the pastor heard, he was, the whole church was thrown into ecstasy. They jubilated. They praised the Lord. And as he came back, my spiritual father blessed him. And told him, you will be lifted up and you will be blessed more than you have ever imagined. But, as you are going back to Lagos, don't go with your driver. Tell him to go with your car, that you will join him the next day. So he told his driver, go to Lagos. I will join you. Tell mama at home, I will be there tomorrow. He said, so how will you come? He said, don't worry about that. As he drove alone to Lagos, he had an accident and he died. When everybody was mourning and they sent the message to him, my spiritual father said to him, that's what the Lord delivered you from. You were going to ride with somebody who had received the curse on his head because he took from that money. I said he took from the money and I wanted to verify it. He said, no, that's why I asked him, is that money complete? The Lord had shown him that the driver was taking some of the money. Was it the driver's money in the first place? All he was asked to do was to go and collect it from someone. This is how so many people have put themselves in trouble. Because we always look at God as someone that we can cheat. As someone we can deceive. You, it may be easy for you to deceive me. It may be easy for you to lie to me. It's very easy for us. When we were growing up, we lied several times to our parents. How many of you did that when you were young? Everybody, everybody. No matter how holy you are, everybody. <laughs> Where are you coming from? They say from the next door. It's a lie. You had gone to play football two miles away. All those of you ladies and those guys too, we did that too. We throw clothes over the fence to the next door. And our friend will pick it up there, meet us outside. We are going to the disco party. But we will go with our casual from the house. So daddy and mommy thinks we have just taken a stroll or a walk. But the real clothes for the event, we have thrown it over the fence to a friend that we are going somewhere together. And when we are back, why did it take you so long? No, we were just talking with our friends. Where did you go? We were just around the corner. But where did we really go? To a party. It's easy for us to lie to ourselves. But to conceive it, you know, that is disturbing. Even for some people to confess their sin before God is difficult. You stole meat from the pot. Uh, which one is all the sin? Lord, I took a piece of meat from the pot. That's the sin. To even confess to him, we want to deceive him. We want to play a game with God. So we get into trouble. This is where I'm going. The disciples were given an instruction. They followed the instruction. And truly somebody asked, Hey, strangers, what are you doing with the donkey? The master sent us. 
We are obeying the master. Oh, the master, okay. The master has need of it, all right. I release it to the master. If they had said we want it, then they would have gotten into trouble. But who sent them was what they mentioned. There was a time in Christ Apostolic Church that the secretary of the church, when we start, had crisis in Christ Apostolic Church from 1990, a lot of power was given to the secretary of the church. And that's why the issue of the certificate of the church became a concern. And we've been in court for a long, in fact, we were in court for about 30 years on the ground that this faction is the original CAC. Why? Because they have the registration, the certificate of the Corporate Affairs Com uh, Commission with them. For us to be a CAC, we have to have it. So the other, our own party, the mainstream also said, we have one with the constitution of so-so-so year. But the original one truly was taken by the secretary because it was handed over to him as the secretary of the church. And when he was suspended and he wanted to create a chaos, he took it away. They created another faction and began to say they are the real CAC with the certificate in their hands. So when the matter was going on and on, the authorities now decided that the secretary that will be appointed for Christ Apostolic Church up till now we don't know, maybe it will change tomorrow. We have certain powers. And when he's writing out a letter now, all he will say is, I am directed to tell you. In other words, if you have issue with what he has written, he is not responsible. Did you get my point? So if they had gone and they said to them, what are you doing with the donkey? Ah, uh, we need your donkey. Say, thief! Ole! Catch them. No. Say, who needs the donkey? The master. So they didn't have to get into trouble. All they have done is to follow his instruction. We had one of our fathers of blessed memory, Pastor uh, Aden Yonju in those days. If we, he came from the executive meeting of the authorities. And they said, go and tell the church. Everybody should come to so so and place and contribute so so money for the day. And he tells the board, the board of Ibutemeta then, they used to call themselves the University of CAC. Powerful people. I pastored them for many years, so I understand the way they think. And the moment they say, no, 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 that is too much. We can't do that. They say, there's no need for you to shout. You have said it once or twice. All I will do is go back and say to the authority, they said, they can't do it. <laughs> and the authority said, go and tell them. He comes to them. The authority said, I should tell you. Said, no, 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 no. Mm -mm, no shout. Said, I told them what you said. They said, no, 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 no. <laughs> and everybody knew him for that. And he was always you may say he was playing safe, but he was always getting them to do it eventually. Because most of the time he will not put himself there. And that's how the man or the disciples were able to get the work done. So what happened next? They placed their clothes on Jesus, on, on the donkey so that Jesus could have some cushion. What service do you render for the body of Christ that you belong to that makes the body of Christ comfortable? That's what you should be thinking of. That's what I should be thinking of. The backbone of the donkey is very hard. I've sat on a horse without a saddle before. And I've sat on a horse with a saddle. The leather that cushion, and I can say the difference. Like placing my head on the rock to sleep on my hand when I'm on the mountain top. And when I have a pillow or the Bible wrapped with my clothes or towel, and I know the difference. 
So some of us do things that make it difficult for the body that we are part of. They place their own cloaks on the master, on the, on the, on the donkey for the master. Then the crowd brought theirs to honor Jesus. And while they were honoring Jesus, they were honoring the donkey. If the donkey had not released itself for Jesus, the donkey would not have been honored by the people. If there's anybody in the house today, you want honor from the world. You honor God in the world. The world will honor you because of God in you. Show Jesus to the world. The world will begin to respect you because of the Jesus that they see in you being revealed to them. Then the donkey. Why would Jesus ride on a donkey? He did that because he was humble. There, was, there were chariots in those days. There were horses in those days. But he took one that people would look at and say, it's for a long journey. The donkey may not go as fast as a horse. But it can go even further than a horse. As it goes slowly, it can go for days without stopping. The horse cannot carry as much load or burden as a donkey. Even though it can run fast. But when it is laden with all the travel gears, with all the loads and what we call luggages of the entire household, the horse will not be able to move fast and it will not go far. But the donkey had been made by the Lord to carry bodies and go far, even if it does not go fast. So Jesus chose a donkey. If I don't use you within the first five years of your Christian commitment to me, if I prepare you for service in 20 years time, will you be able to stand till the time comes? Will the burden not weigh you down? Will you continue for as long as as I am sitting on you, even though you want it quick, but I say I will watch only my own time to fulfill it. Why the donkey? The donkey is a symbol of service. Why the donkey? The donkey is a symbol of humility, it doesn't complain. Like so many other animals, it obeys the instruction of the master easily. Why the donkey? It is because the unusual, the unwanted sometimes, that which is of lowly status, God says I can use to glorify myself. When we are too wise in our eyes, God will skip us. I use those who can only say, Lord, use me. I'm available. If you can use anything, Lord, Ron can only say, you can use me. In conclusion, the entire crowd celebrated the, G the Lord Jesus. But the donkey was in the midst of the celebration. There is no one who stands with the Lord who does not enjoy the showers of the accolades, the tributes. Every time we read about the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, we will mention the donkey. You cannot do without mentioning the donkey. That donkey became special just for giving the Lord a ride. There was a woman in the Bible who broke an alabaster box of ointment. 
The fragrance filled the entire house. The value or the worth of the perfume or the perfume oil. The disciples put it as something that could cover a man's one year wages. But to them that day, she had wasted it by breaking the container, pouring the oil on, on Jesus' feet. But nobody even took notice that she used her hair as a towel to clean up the feet. What we will call the pride of women, even though we have so much fake of it in town today. Am I correct? Only very few women have the real hair on their head today. Brazilian loku. They will to tell you Brazilian. Jamaica. Which one again? Synthetic. We know synthetic. Anyway, if you go and Google and watch very well, you will see the origin of some of this Brazilian hair from those who are Hare Krishnas cultists and those who dedicated, dedicate those things to demons before they sell them. But that's not where I'm going. The pride of women. What you cannot just put your hand over to uh, the next thing is, uh, why are you scattering my hair? Women love it because it's their fashion, it's their beauty, it's their glory. But there was someone who can say, the only place where this one can stand is at the feet of the master. Everything that I call glory on me can only be placed at the feet of the master, can only be used as a towel. Oh my goodness. And then the master said, wherever this gospel of mine is being preached, what she has done today, this act of breaking the alabaster oil, of taking what will take her 12 years to earn and spend it on me today, and some people call it a waste, said from today it shall be spoken of as a memorial unto her. There is no one who does anything for the Lord that the Lord will not give you or put your name in the hallmark of faith, goodness, greatness, and power in life. Shall we rise to our feet? And let's pray and talk to the Lord. This is my own Palm Sunday. And every day of my life will be a palm day. When I will take my palm, my clothes, my substance and do something for the Lord. When I will take my time, my money and my own thing and place it before the Lord. Every day will be my palm day. What do I have this day to release to the Lord? What am I going to give him? Is it what I don't need? Even dogs reject. Go on social media. Somebody was playing with his dog. Especially, I think Chinese people do a lot. The one I saw yesterday, he put a sausage, long one, in the mouth of his brother and put the second one in the mouth of the dog. Say, the two of you hold it. I took a, a pair of scissors. So I'm going to cut it in half so that you take a piece each. So he put it at the center and the two of them were looking at it. Suddenly he moved it backward towards the nose of the dog and cut it there. And if you see the way the dog looked at him, in amazement that this is cheating, rubbish, and the dog dropped the part of the sausage, backed at him. The dog should have taken what you will say half bread is better than none today. But the dog even saw it as cheating. What you said was you will cut it in half. Now to reduce it, <laughs> reduce mine, is ridiculous to me. Even a dog can reject something. Am I communicating? So when the woman said the crumbs will be good enough for the dogs, that is at a point. I don't know if you are, I have pets. I know when my dogs have rejected food. I gave my dog cookies that were hard to break. Cookies. And they were tasteless. And the dog brought it back to me. I looked at the dog. 
I came behind to give you this thing. You brought it back to me where I was standing and washing my hand by the tap. Dropped it, looked at me, I was walking away. I said, that means the dog doesn't like it, has rejected it. Where did I get this one from? Gala. I have two different dogs. Gala, I broke it into two. Gave one. That one opened it, ate the beef inside. Left the remaining. The second one chewed on everything together. That other one made me know it's the beef that is for me. But we let all you carry this flower. So the, God himself knows what we are presenting to him. You may wrap it with deceit, but he knows the intent of your heart. Lift your hand and say, my father, my father, I surrender myself to you. I give myself to you. Use me, I'm available. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus? Use me, I'm available. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. One more time, cry aloud, my father, my father. Don't let me miss your purpose for my life. Help me to trust you and to obey you. Even when it is difficult, open your mouth and begin to pray. Don't let me miss your purpose for my life. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. May the hand of the Lord rest upon us. May we be useful to the Lord all the days of our lives. May every day be a palm day for us. A day of celebration. A day of jubilation. And there will be an announcement in our lives, over our lives, concerning our lives, that we are the treasure of the Lord. The apple of the Lord's eye. Our better days are here. Our better years are here. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Please be seated. Before we take the offering and tithes, be seated. We are celebrating this special day and we have our community hymn singing today. It's in the service. We are going to soon flow into it. Be part of it. Then, Tuesday Bible study. Thursday, the prophetic and the apostolic hour, 6 to 9 a.m. In the evening is Holy Thursday, Holy Communion service. All our branches will be coming here. We'll be celebrating that together 6 to 7.30 p.m. So Thursday, two major services. Friday is Good Friday service, just for one and a half hours, 9 a.m., to 10.30. Sunday will be Easter Thanksgiving for all families, all the departments, all the units. Come together with Thanksgiving offering before the Lord. And then on Monday we'll be going to Galilee with the prophet at uh, Agege Stadium in the morning. So this week is a week of celebration and the favor of the Lord shall rest upon us all in Jesus' name. So we can give thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. This is another important service, part of the service. Uh, if today actually is your past Sunday, and I want you to do it for the world, this is an offering time. Offering time is a blessing time. Uh, you know, the Bible says in the book of Luke, it says give, it will be given back to you. Not only that, it will be given back to you. He says, go to begin it back to you with good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it together. And it will be poured back onto you. But there's a condition on it that for with measure you use to do this, that same measure is what we are going to use. I want you to use a good measure this morning. Brethren, from what my pastor, my senior pastor has told us this morning, the way he has assorted us, more and writing daddy, I want you to do it, use it to, as a point of contact that today is my own Palm Sunday. So it's the beginning of my Palm Sunday. So every other day will be a Palm Sunday for us in the name of Jesus. So if you have packages, I want you to package it very well. If you have other pledges in the house of the Lord, 
This is the time you can redeem it. Pledges, packages, write on it in a different envelope, come and deliver it. So, you know, it is better not to pledge than for you to pledge not to redeem it. So, I want you to stand up with it and let us raise it up. Our Lord, our God, we use this as a point of contact unto you as our Palm Sunday. Oh Lord, my Father, our God, if donkey from what I've heard this morning could be celebrated, how much more we that are human beings. Oh Lord, my Father, my God, we present this unto you. Father, come and do your needful in our life in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, our God, this is just a token from the multitude you have given unto us. We bring it, oh Lord, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, let it be useful in the house of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let it be acceptable from us in the name of Jesus. Use it, oh Lord, my Father, my God, to propagate the kingdom of Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we bless your name for in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Happy Palm Sunday to you all. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 19, it says we should talk to each other in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs. So we're going to be exalting one another in, in hymns this morning, uh, which is our community hymn singing day. Amen. So if you have your hymn book, please bring it out. We're going to be singing hymns unto the Lord. The first hymn we're going to be singing is hymn 633. 633. If you don't have a hymn book, please sit beside someone that has the hymn book. This, this song, which encourages us to keep from entering temptation, the song presents several things that we can do to help us keep from yielding to temptation. Hymn 3633 3, 3 says, Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. From stanza one, we learn that we must determine to fight manfully onward. Stanza two says, we learn that we must avoid evil companions and their bad influences. Stanza three says, we learn that we must look to Jesus for help and keep our eyes on the crown. The chorus again reminds us that we, that when we face temptation, we should seek help from Jesus and Jesus alone. This song is authored by Horatio Richmond Palmer and the tune is Palmer. So we're going to be singing hymn 633 which says, Yield not to temptation. You can be seated as we sing. Is there? Cause they're moving. 
let's be upstanding as we sing the last verse. So powerful very powerful just ask the savior to help you comfort strengthen and keep you he is willing to aid you he will carry you through let's take this refrain again seated. The second hymn we're going to be taking is hymn 686. Hymn 686. I heard the voice of Jesus say, to him we stresses the fact that we need to be guided by hearing the words of Jesus are light. The hymn presents three invitations of Jesus and the proper human responses. Stanza 1 says, We hear Christ's invitation to come for rest. Stanza 2, we, ha we have Jesus' invitation to drink of his living water. Stanza 3 says, We have Christ's invitation to look upon his light. This aim was composed by Mainz Gesambok in 1833. And the tune is Ella Kumba. It says, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Oh 
of it. I want someone that can sing this song alone from the congregation. Wow. That means that we don't even know this tune at all. Okay. You, did, you are not raising up your hand. You said? I don't know. It's, it, it is this tune that we want to sing. No one can try. Okay. Maybe the choir take the last verse. Then we, we don't have much time. We'll move on to the next song. Let's take the last verse again. taking is him 710 and we all the congregation will be standing as we take that song it says savior more than life to me savior more than life to me these are words of a christian hymn that express a deep and personal devotion to jesus christ the lyrics i like the profound significance of christ in the believer's life, portraying him as more vital than life itself. The hymn emphasizes the desire for a close and intimate relationship with Jesus, acknowledging his precious blood as a source of spiritual cleansing and a means to remain near his side. This hymn was composed in 1875 by Fanny Crosby famous Fanny Crosby and the tune is the famous tune is Savior more than life to me everybody we shall be on our feet as we sing Close up, close up, close to me. 
angel voice to sing this song. Okay, someone is raising his hands at the uh, hands at the back. Okay, can you come forward and take? Can we put our hands together for for her? Okay, you want to take it in Europe? Huh? Fine, fine. Taking to Mofferore, ni badi e wolo la ye. Give a heart, titi do pi, titi aye tiko ni beku. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. She has really done a nice job. But we're going to take the last verse, the choir. And Pastor, you want to take this song? <laughs> okay, let's take the last verse together. Let me walk, be on and walk, till this fleeting, fleeting life is gone. Refrain again. So powerful a song. So powerful a song. If you put yourself in that song, you know that it's so powerful. It's so powerful. This refrain says, Every day, every hour, let me feel thy cleansing power. May thy tender love to me bind me closer, closer, Lord, to thee. The refrain, refrain again. seated. The next one is also, we're going to sing it while we're standing, but let me give us a brief of the song. Hymn 291. Hymn 291. We know today is Palm Sunday, so we have selected one of the song to depict what is happening today. It says, and the crowds that went before him and followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It's a tune, Winchester Old. And then the meter is CM. So we're going to be taking him to nine one Hosanna unto David's son Hosanna raise the strain while we are standing I believe all of us knows this one so it won't be hard for anyone to come out and sing after the choir sing the, all of us take the first verse Hosanna unto David's son So 
who's going from this side? At least someone has come from this. Let's have someone from this side to take it. This is a simple song that we've been singing together. Uh, this is so, oh, can you help us? You can help us now. Spot, so she had to do it. So let's have someone that can do give us a better pastor. Any suru, I think I'm more job calling. sing in Yoruba. Our mommy will sing for us in Yoruba. Please come. Please come. Sing verse 3. take the, the fourth and fifth stanza all together. Shall we be seated? We just have about three or four songs more to go. And the next one is hymn 254. Hymn 254. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veil. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. It's also a common song. I've not had anybody from these two rows. So be prepared. I might call on you to come and sing. Please listen very well. It's going to be another tune that you may not know. So please be attentive as they sing. Okay. Oh, 
Amen. They will sing to verse 3. Then the song seems difficult for the people. We will go, we will go to one of the tunes that we know, then we'll sing it very well. Sing verse 3 first, so that at least they can be acquainted with this uh, tune. Sorry, we are trying to pick the tune that will that will fit. Verse 4. ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The next hymn is hymn 871. 871. Safe in the arms of Jesus. This is a song I personally like to sing in Yoruba. But if you like, you can sing in English. Only life for your lapa Jesu. Life for your liar, la bell, gg, yer, lock on me, you see me. The song of assurance. This song is also uh, authored by Francis Crosby in 1915. She saves in the arms of Jesus. Rescued, he sings, she sings so many other songs, like say, rescuing the parish, past me not to genuine seven. This woman of God is. Very powerful, and she has wrote so many songs. Stanza one is emphasizing on Christ's love, saving the arms of Jesus, safe in his gentle breast. Stanza two is emphasizing on the freedom 
that we have in Christ safe from corroding crafts. Stanza 3 is saying, it's emphasizing on the trust that we can place in Christ Jesus. My heart's dear refuge, Jesus has died for me. We're going to be singing in 871, safe in the arms of Jesus. Maybe we should stand up and sing this song. because we have less than eight minutes to round off this program. This is a common song now. Okay. Uh, I can't see there. Okay, please come forward. Come forward quickly. Come forward quickly. We don't have much time. Come forward quickly. Okay, two of you. Please let the person that knows this tune sing.
Shall we put our hands together for her? Amen. Shall we be seated while the choir take the last stanza of that uh, safe in the arms of Jesus, then they go to the next song, which is Conquerors and Overcomers Away. Okay. Take the last stanza. Jesus, my heart, clap us unto the Lord. The last hymn which the choir will take alone, but if you know, you can go along with us, is in 815. In 815. Conquerors and overcomers now are we. I know as you go in this week, you will remain conqueror in the name of Jesus.
We rise up. Continue to celebrate the name of the Lord. Bless God in their life with a clap. Somebody has it. Some people are still sitting down. Celebrate God with a clap. More anointing in Jesus' name. See. I want him here, it may look simple, but uh, it takes time to practice for them to bring it out like this. I pray all the time you are spent, God will replenish it in Jesus' name. More anointing in Jesus' name. I pray all the resources, all your time, the Lord we convert it to glorious destiny. You will go to places in the mighty name of Jesus. Please don't be tired. Continue. There is a reward for everything. Please celebrate the grace of God in their life. Amen. I used to be a choir master. I wonder why they did not give me the mic. They are afraid of me. Keep me like Baragon. And everybody is afraid of my key. May God help you. Amen. I just want to say good morning to everybody. Good morning, church. We just take these announcements.